Welcome to Road to 250. Today, we're only going to cover lysosomal storage diseases. I have like a review slide, and then we have questions. And there might be a mini quiz at the end, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right, so moving on. Uh, so lysosomes, what is the main function? It's a membrane-bound organelle of the cell. It contains enzymes that are essential for breakdown of many biological structures, such as proteins, nucleic acids, carbohydrates, and lipids. And <clears throat> it digests obsolete components of the cell. So when you have a lysosomal storage disease, you have an absence of the lysosomal enzymes that leads to uh, leads to inability of breaking down complex molecules, and that will lead to accumulation of these molecules, and that will is essentially the disease that you're going to see. And most of them are autosomal recessive. There's a few ones that are not, and we'll go through them in detail. So, and many of these diseases do not have a treatment or a cure, but there are a few that do, and also covered those. So just some general background information. Um, so when, when we talk about lysosomal storage diseases, we're basically talking about sphingolipids, and they contain a, a molecule called sphingosine, and which is like a long chain amino acid or amino alcohol. So this is an example of what a sphingosine looks like. <clears throat> and I guess essentially, let me just draw your attention here, it's like a fatty acid chain right here because it's full of carbon and hydrogen. So most of these diseases have abnormal processing of sphingolipids, and this is essentially why I'm covering this. So when you add um, fatty acids to the NH2 here, this basically becomes a ceramide. So this is essentially what we're going to talk about today, and most of these molecules are ceramide derivatives, so I'll talk about those in a second. So... Ceramide derivatives are basically modification of the head group. So what I mean by head group is the head group here, you're going to see a different attachment of such as a sugar or another molecule that will change the structure of the ceramide to these glycosphingolipids uh, or sulfatides and other structures that we basically cause these diseases. And these are very important structures for nerve tissue, and if we lack the breakdown of these structures, it leads to accumulation in the liver and spleen, and that causes hepatosplenomegaly and many of these diseases. So does this make sense? This is like a general background information about the disease process that we're going to see. All right. So first one that we'll talk about is ceramide trihexosite. Um, it's a three sugar head group on a ceramide molecule. So it's a ceramide with the glucose, galactose, galactose molecule. And it's typically broken down by alpha glucosidase A. Um, what disease has a deficiency of alpha glucosidase A? Fabry's? Correct. It's Fabry's disease. So the deficiency here is alpha glucosidase A enzyme, and accumulation will be the ceramide trihexoside molecule because we are not able to break it down. So Fabry's disease is, an, um, as I said here, uh, excellent recessive, and it slowly progress has slow progressive symptoms, and it begins in child or early adulthood. Um, symptoms include neuropathy. So the this is classically pain in the limbs, hands, or feet. Um, you're going to see angiokeratomas as a skin finding. And these are just small, dark red to purple raised spots on the skin. And that's due to dilated surface capillaries. And you see decreased sweat in these patients. And there are some life-threatening symptoms that can occur. It's renal disease due to proteinuria that leads to renal failure. Or cardiac disease, which is left ventricular hypertrophy that leads to heart failure in these patients. And some patients can have CNS problems, and that's basically a TI or stroke, but occurs at a very early age. Um, initially, the disease may be misdiagnosed, and there are enzyme replacement therapies available. So there's a recombinant galactosidase enzyme that can be given to these uh, children, and they can live into early adulthood, or adulthood, per se. Um, the classic case that you may see on a board question might be a child with pain in hands or feet, 
plaque of sweating, and then the skin findings. Um, and this is just what you would see from first aid, the triad of episodic peripheral neuropathy and your keratomas, as you see in this picture right here, and hydro, uh, hypohydros hydrosis. And late progression can lead to renal failure and cardiovascular disease, as I've mentioned before. So the enzyme that's deficient is your alpha-galactosidase A, and then what accumulates is your ceramide trihexoside, and it's excellent for sensing. So you would see this in a, a, a younger child, most likely, uh, for pathology, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, typically, you're going to see this um, early on. I'm pretty sure. All right. Any questions? Any other questions? Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll move on to uh, glucose cerebroside. It's a glucose head on the ceramide molecule. So again, the glucose binds to the OH of the ceramide. And typically, it's broken down by glucose cerebrosidase as the enzyme. What disease is due to deficiency of the glucose cerebrosidase? It's a very famous one. So it's a deficiency in the glucose cerebrosidase enzyme and it accumulates the glucose cerebroside molecule. So Gaucher's disease is the most common lysosomal storage disease. It's autosomal recessive and most common amongst Ashkenazi Jewish population. And basically the lipid accumulates in the spleen, liver, and bones. And we'll talk about specific symptoms on the next slide. Um, so you're going to see hepatosplenomegaly, and splenomegaly is the most common initial sign that you'll see with these patients. Um, in the bones, in the marrows, you'll see anemia, thrombocytopenia, but rarely leukopenia, and often easy bruising because of your low platelet count. So these patients will come with easy bruising as another symptom. Um, you all can also can see avascular necrosis of the joints, and your joints can collapse, and that's specifically due to ischemia, ischemia of the joints. Um, because you have enlarged macrophages that are filled with these sphingolipids, they can obstruct the vessels and cut off the blood supply to these joints, and that's why you see joint, joint pain or joint collapse or avascular necrosis. And there's actually several types of uh, Gaucher's disease, like there's type 1, type 2, and type 3. 2 and 3 have CNS-related uh, uh, disease processes. So in those patients, you may see gaze palsy, dementia, and ataxia. But those are less asked about, so we're not really going to talk about it. I'll just have them for you guys to know. In Gaucher's disease, you all can also can see bone crisis, and that's severe bone pain due to your bone in, uh, infarction, so ischemia again, and infiltration of the Gaucher cells in the intramedullary space, and that causes intense pain, often with fever. So the disease process or pathophysiology is similar to what sickle cell will present as. Um, but the key thing you want to take is that these Gaucher cells are like macrophages filled with lipids, and I have a picture of that as well, right there. <laughs> so. Um, it's the macrophages that are filled with lipids. It looks like crinkled paper appearance. So that's another test giveaway that comes up on an exam question. And like I said, there are several types. Type 1 is the most common form. It presents from childhood to adult. Have minimal CNS dysfunction, but uh, common symptoms are hepatosplenomegaly, bruising, anemia, and joint problems. And these patients can live a normal lifespan due to enzyme replacement therapy. There's a synthetic glucose reperside ACE enzyme, and I think it's a recombinant DNA, if I'm correct, um, that they can get. Yeah, it's a recombinant DNA uh, enzyme that can be given to these patients, and they can live a normal lifespan. And then type 2 um, usually presents in infancy but has marked CNS symptoms, and most of these patients die by the age of 2. And type 3 is a childhood onset, leads to progressive dementia, and shortens your lifespan. So there's different types, 
but the most common ones that you need to know about is your type one that's going to be commonly tested. So a classic case that you may see of Gaucher's disease is a child of Ashkenazi Jewish descent has splenomegaly on physical exam, presents with anemia or bruising, and has joint pain or fractures. So as covered, it's the most common. Um, you commonly see hepatosplenomegaly, pancytopenia, osteoporosis, and then avascular necrosis of the femur and bone crisis. And these are Gaucher cells here, um, or Gaucher cells that you can see. And they're lipid-laden macrophages that resemble crumpled tissue paper. So the key thing that you want to talk, think about is macrophages. So the enzyme deficient is your glucose reversidase, and your glucose reverside is the molecule that's going to basically accumulate. And it's also sensitive. Any questions? Not. We'll move on to the next one, which is sphingomyelin. So this is a phosphate nitrogen head group on the ceramide molecule, and it's typically broken down by sphingomyelinase. So what enzyme or what disease has a deficiency in the enzyme sphingomyelinase? Neiman Pick. Correct. Neiman Pick disease, and this is again deficiency in your sphingomyelinase and accumulation of your sphingomyelin. So. This disease is autosomal recessive, and it's most common among Ashkenazi Jewish population. Uh, splenomegaly and neurologic defects are more common, <clears throat> and there are multiple subtypes of the disease, and, and presents in infancy to adulthood based on the type. So symptoms will include hepatosplenomegaly. Uh, you can see secondary thrombocytopenia due to the enlargement of the spleen. And that will lead to easy bruising and bleeding. So that's another symptom that you may see. Um, you have progressive neuro impairment. So there's weakness and that will worsen over time. So classical presentation of this will be a child that loses motor skills, um, but was previously well. So it's a sudden onset. And obviously the common one is a cherry red spot. Uh, what other conditions can you see a cherry red spot? Tay or diseases per se. Tay sacs, Tay sacs, Neiman pick as Retinal covered here. artery occlusion. Sorry, Divya, what you say? Retinal artery occlusion. Yep. Yes. No. Closely, Gaucher's doesn't. You don't see cherry red spot. So the three disease processes that you see is Neiman pick, Tay sacs, and as Divya said, central artery occlusion or central retinal artery occlusion. So, <clears throat> essentially, this is what it will look like. And the last one, which was the central retinal artery occlusion, usually occurs in stroke patients or patients who had stroke, and it's never commonly seen in children. So, if it's a child with a cherry red spot, you want to go with either Neiman Pick or Chase Sex. Um, and essentially, the back of the eye in this picture here becomes really pale. And when you're doing a microscopic exam, that will lead to this red cherry spot. That's why you'll see a cherry red spot. And then pathologically, you're going to see large macrophages with lipids. Do you know? Oh, yeah, it's right there. They're called foam cells. Um, and there's another picture of that. I'll show you this is like a macrophage that is filled with lipids. And the severe form of this disease, you can have death by the age of three or four. So a classic case with the Neiman Pick disease would be a previously well healthy child who has weakness and loses his motor skills, has an enlarged liver or spleen on physical exam, and a cherry red spot. So here you get progressive neurodegeneration, hepatosplenomegaly, and then foam cells here, as you can see. And you can also see a cherry red spot on macula, which is with another picture that I put in here, but it's right here. So the enzyme deficient is your sphingomyelinase, and the enzyme that build or the molecule that builds up is your sphingomyelin. Okay. So moving on to our next one, which is galactocerebroside. And it's a galactose head group on the ceramide molecule. 
and it's typically broken down by galactocerebrosidase, as by the name. So it's a major, this um, galactocerebrosidase is a major component of myelin. So what disease is due to deficiency in the galactocerebrosidase? Crabase. Crabase, yeah. Crabase disease, yeah. And this is a deficiency in galactocerebrosidase. So abnormal metabolism of the galactocerebroside molecule. So in Crabase disease, it's autosomal recessive, usually presents in less than six months of age. And keep this, this time period in mind for another disease that we'll all talk about in a few minutes. Come on. And so with Crabase disease, you're only going to see neuro symptoms. Um, you're not typically going to see liver or spleen or bone marrow involvement with this disease, disease process. So it leads to progressive weakness in a baby. So you can have developmental delay, uh, eventually floppy limbs and loss of head control. There's an absent reflex and optic atrophy. So it leads to a vision loss in, child, in the child, child. And often you see a fever without an infection. So this is usually why you see death by less than two years. Um, Crabase disease is also called globoid cell leukodystrophy, and this name is primarily due to the presence of globoid cells in the neuronal tissues. So these are like globe cell sh or sh globe shaped cells, and they often have more than one nucleus. So this pathologic slide, this would be a globoid cell. So this is why the, another name for this can also be. Um, Globoid cell leukodystrophy. So here from first aid, you're going to see peripheral neuropathy, destructions of oligodendrocytes, and developmental delay. And then the globoid cell, which they don't have a picture of, but that's what it looks like. The enzyme deficient is your galactocerebrosidase, and what builds up is your galactocerebroside. And then it's autosomal recessive. So the next one we're going to talk about is your gangliosides. And they contain the head group with NANA, which is also called sialic uh, acid. And I'm not going to try to say this name, even though I think I can do it. But we're not going to go there. Um, so the name uh, G GM1, GM2 is basically, the G stands for a gangliocide, and I spelled that wrong. Um, and M is for the number of nano, which is sialic acid so in this case they're all m which are mono so there's only one molecule and then one two or three represents the number of sugar sequences so what is the defective metabolism of gangliocide lead to what disease tay-sachs correct tay-sachs is the right answer so in this one um well i was going to ask you that question but it's hexosaminidase a and it breaks down the GM2 ganglioside. So an accumulation of GM2 ganglioside is seen, and it's more common amongst Ashkenazi Jewish population as well. So most common form presents between the ages of three to six, and the symptoms that you'll see are progressive neurodegeneration. So you have a slow developmental process, you see weakness, um, exaggerated startle reflex, and it progresses to seizures, vision loss, hearing loss, and paralysis, and usually death in childhood in these patients. Another one is a cherry red spot. But what differentiates Tay-Sachs from Neiman picks? No hepatosplenomegaly. Correct. No hepatosplenomegaly. And that is the contrast between you and Neiman So classic, classic path findings, you're going to see lysosomes with onion skinning. And that's usually seen under electron microscopy. So a classic presentation of a kid um, would be a three to six month old infant, um, Ashkenazi Jewish descent, developmental delay, and exaggerated startle response, and then the cherry red spot. So this is from first aid. Again, this is that picture, same picture. Um, Leads to progressive neurodegeneration, developmental delay, 
and then lysosomes with onion skinning, but obviously no hepatosplenomegaly with the worst immune pick. So the enzyme deficient is hexaminidase A, and what builds up is your GM2 ganglioside. All right, so moving right along, we have your sulfatides. Um, so these are basically the galactoserebrosides plus your sulfuric acid, and they're a major component of myelin. So they're broken down by aerial sulfatase A. Um, what disease has this deficiency? Hunters? Ireland? Yeah. Okay, none of those. Oh, shit. Oh, so no, this, this is um, metal, metachromatic leukodystrophy. Uh, correct, yeah. yeah. Metachromatic leukodystrophy. Nice. And the deficiency is aerial sulfatase A and accumulation. Um, I kind of learned it a bit different, but it's cerebroside sulfate. So that's what you're going to see built up. And metachromatic leukodystrophy, it's autosomal recessive, it's like many of these, the childhood to adult onset based on the subtype. So the most common type is roughly around the age of two. And this is in contrast with Crabbe's disease because it, Crabbe's usually presents with less than six months versus metachromatic leukodystrophy is around the age of two. Um, and you, but the patient with at the age of two, you're going to kind of see gait problems because they're starting to learn to walk and stuff. Um, and so you're going to see ataxia, gait problems, and falls. Hypotonia, because they're also more common to speak, so they can have speech problems. Dementia can develop, and most children do not survive childhood. So you can get central and peripheral demyelination with ataxia and dementia. So enzyme deficient is aureal sulfatase A. And cerebroside sulfate are its victims. So, so um, this is like a review chart that I found very helpful. Um, so, what we're going to focus first on is this left side here. So, weakness is not a major component of Fabre's or Gaucher's disease. So, that's why they have their unique set symptoms or unique triad. So, for Fabre's disease, you're going to see hand or feet pain decrease in sweat, and then obviously the angiokeratomas or the rash. So that's a unique triad for this, um, this disease. And the way you can also think about these two together is because they do have enzyme therapies that are available. So these patients with these two diseases can live into adulthood because of those enzyme replacements. And in Gaucher's disease, you're going to see spleen problems, anemias, and fractures as um, the major symptoms with these patients. So you want to think of them a little bit separately than the rest of here. So if I clear that, and we'll move on to the weakness. As we know, weakness is um, a common symptom with the rest of the diseases. However, the age is kind of very important. So typically, Crabbe's disease and Tay-Sachs have affect a baby or a younger uh, child. And the difference here you're going to think about is there's no cherry red spot with Crabbe's disease, but you will see that in Tay-Sachs. And you also see no splenomegaly, um, which is different from Neiman Pick, obviously. Um, and then if you have an older child with ataxia, obviously you want to think of metachromatic leukodystrophy. And if it's an older child with a liver or hepatosplenomegaly and a cherry red spot, obviously you're going to think of Neiman Pick disease. So it kind of helps you break it down. It's not all the symptoms and all the signs, but it just gives you a good breakdown. Don't worry no, about this. This is yes. a great, great chart, actually. Yeah. So if you have no questions, we'll move on to a few more diseases that we got to cover. And I have a question for you guys. So glycosaminoglycans are basically also called um, macu, uh, mucopolysaccharides. Sorry. Uh, they're long polysaccharides of repeating disaccharide units. And so it's like an amino sugar and uronic acid. And this basically helps you uh, make heparan sulfate and dermatan sulfate, which will play a big role in the next two disease processes. So you guys were talking about Hunter's and Hurler syndrome earlier. There are metabolic disorders 
and they basically have the inability to break down heparin or dermatan sulfate. Um, the diagnosis, obviously, you're going to see uh, mucopolysaccharides in your urine, and there are several types of mucopolysaccharidosis. Um, hurdlers is type 1, hunters is type 2, and there's actually a total of seven of them, but we're only going to focus on the top two. So in Hurler syndrome, it's autosomal recessive. It's deficiency of what enzyme? Alpha L iduronidase. Correct. Good job. Alpha one iduronidase is um, the enzyme that's deficient, and you want to remember that iduronidase is an important um, component of heparin and dermatan sulfate. So that if you can remember that, then you can remember the enzymes that are deficient. So this will lead to accumulation of heparin, which again, spelled wrong, and dermatin sulfate. And symptoms usually occur in the first year of life. So you're gonna see facial abnormalities or coarse features, short stature, and then additional symptoms that you may see are mental retardation, hepatosplenomegaly, and dysostosis multiplex, which is basically an x-ray finding that you're going to see in kids with Hurdler syndrome. And you, when you take the x-ray, review it, you're going to see an enlarged skull and an abnormal rib response. But it's called dysostosis multiplex. I like that name. Um, with Hurdler syndrome, you're going to see corneal clouding. And that's due to abnormal size arrangements of the collagen fibers. So as we know, cornea is the layer on top of the lens in front of the eye. And because this arrangement, of the size arrangements are abnormal, it's going to cause the clouding. And they, you can see ear, sinus, and pulmonary infections. And they're usually recurrent infections because they have uh, thick secretions due to the abnormal mucopolysaccharides. And they can also have airway obstruction and sleep apnea and that's due to the tracheal cartilage abnormalities. So these are the symptoms that you may see in a patient with Hurler syndrome. Um, in first aid, it shows that you have a developmental delay, airway obstruction, corneal clouding, hepatosplenomegaly, um, and then, as Divya mentioned, alpha-1 hydroronidase enzyme, and then the build of heparin sulfate and dermatan sulfate. So with hunters, what is different? Well, it's an X-linked recessive disorder. And what is the deficient enzyme? I do run a something. Yeah, I do run a two sulfatase um, or IDS. So the differences between here or between hurlers are um, it's similar, but the only difference is it has a later onset. So about one to two years of age. There is no corneal clouding, but these patients do have a behavioral problem. They have learning difficulty, and they have trouble sitting still, which mimics like ADHD, and they often have aggressive behavior. And as seen here, it's a milder, mild hurler with aggressive behavior and no corneal clouding. So I do run it to sulfatase, that's the enzyme, and the buildup is the same. But the only difference here, it's also excellent recessive. So one last one, eye cell disease. And you're probably wondering, why is eye cell disease in here? Um, eye cell disease is a subtype of mucolipidosis disorder. So it has a combined feature of sphingolipid and mucopolysaccharide diseases. So it's the presentation is similar to hurlers. Onset is usually in the first year of life. There's growth failure, coarse features, hypotonia, motor delay. They have frequent re respiratory infections. They have clouded corneas, joint abnormalities, and dysostosis multiplex is also present, which is just enlarged skull, abnormal spine, and ribs. So usually lysosomal enzymes are synthesized normally, um, but failure of processing in the Golgi apparatus is what causes eye cell disease. So typically, mono-6-phosphate is added to lysosome proteins, which helps to direct these enzymes through the lysosome. However, in a disease process for eye cell, mono-6-phosphate does not add, um, or mono-6-phosphate is not added to these lysosomal proteins. So that leads to the enzymes being secreted outside of the cells. 
So key findings for these patients you're going to see are um, deficiency in, of the intracellular enzyme levels in white blood cells or fibroblasts, and then that leads to an increased extracellular enzyme levels in the plasma. So multiple enzymes are abnormal, and intracellular inclusions in lymphocytes and fibroblasts are also seen. So think, you can think about it as low levels inside the cell, high levels outside the cell, for simple terms. So it's an inclusion cell disease, but it is also a mucolipidosis type 2. So it's an inherited lysosomal storage disorder. Um, I know many of the MBME questions that you may see also include this enzyme. Um, so just keep that in mind. And it's basically the failure of the Golgi to phosphorylate monose residues, so decreasing the monose 6-phosphate and the glycoproteins. And these proteins are then secreted extracellularly rather than delivered to the lysosomes. So that results in coarse features, facial features, gingival hyperplasia, corneal clouded, corneal clouding, restricted joint movements, kyphoscoliosis, and high plasma levels of the lysosomal enzymes and it's often fatal in childhood. So I just wanted to add that in there. It's not typically the ones that you think about when you think about lysosomal storage diseases, but it's also good to add. So if nobody has any questions, I'd like to do a little quick quiz slash review with you guys, if, and it shouldn't take that long. So um, you guys up for it? All right, so what are the deficient, though, for number one, from going from GM2 to GM3, what is the deficient enzyme? Uh, Hexosaminidase yeah. A. Correct, yes. Hexosaminidase A. And obviously, if you don't have this enzyme, you're going to have a buildup of GM2. What disease is that? Okay. Correct, good job. Um, so if you have ceramide trihexoside going to a glucose or what enzyme is deficient if you haven't built up a ceramide trihexoside? Alpha galactoside A. Oh, correct. Alpha galactoside A. And that oh, is Fabry's. <laughs> correct. Fabry's disease. <laughs> um, from sulfatide to galactoserebroside. What enzyme? Aryl sulfatase A. Aryl sulfatase A is correct. And what's the, the disease that you may see with deficient aryl sulfatase A? Chromatic glucodystrophy. Correct. Good job. You guys are on the roll today. From galactocerebroside to ceramide? Galactocerebroside Correct. Galactocerebroside What's the disease? Krebs. Krebs. Our base disease is correct. From a glucocerebroside to a ceramide? Glucocerebrosides. Correct. Um, what's the deficient or the disease? Gaucher's. Gaucher's disease, correct. And from sphingomyelin to ceramide? Sphingomyelinase. Sphingomyelinase is correct. And that one is what disease? Neiman pick. Neiman pick. Even pick. What's the uh, fuck? Y'all be studying fucking biochem or something without me? What the fuck? <laughs> Good job. Uh, Good job. So I just knew one of them. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they kind of killed it today. Yeah. Uh, what the hell? So yeah. with Neiman pick, a good way to remember is no one, no man picks his nose with his finger, not his finger, his finger. And sphingomyelinase and Neiman pick is the way you can remember. And then Tay Sachs has the X and hexosaminidase. So, um, with hunters clearly or see clearly, so there's no corneal clouding and aggressive aim for their X. So, X linked recessive. I don't know. And as I've mentioned, you have an increase in incidence of Tay Sachs, Neiman pick, and some forms of Gaucher's disease. And Ashkenazi Jew, Jewish population. So good job, guys. But you're not done. You have one more question to answer. 
Uh, two-year-old girl is brought to her pediatrician because of progressive loss of motor function and a decline in her cognitive abilities. On physical exam, it is noted that the patient has decreased deep tendon reflexes, trunchal ataxia, and a decreased attention span in comparison to the child of the class visit six months ago. The physician knows that her pathology is due to an abnormal accumulation of cerebroside sulfate in her brain, peripheral nerves, kidneys, and liver, a deep deficiency in which of the following enzymes leads to this condition. C. Okay, I have one C. Um, okay, I can't really see this. So, I think C too. H, agrees. Okay, so all three are C's. Good job. That is the right answer. What does she have? Metachromatic leukodystrophy. Correct. There you go. I, did, I think I've drilled that enough today. So if you guys had any questions about the other answers, they're right there. If you need me to explain anything, I can also do that. But you guys have been pretty good with this. So that's all I got for you guys. Any questions? Uh, no, but I did want to add something about what helps me remember which... Um, Enzyme is deficient between hurlers and hunters. The one that has the okay. alpha, um, the one that has the alpha L hydronidase. I remember the L going with hurlers versus the uh, uh, the okay. other one's gonna be hunters. That's true. If that helps anybody. That's all. Cool. All right.